Ah, oh, brilliant, works. This looks really cool. Hello and welcome back. Okay, I finished the last video showing this Vortex demo and I haven't forgotten I promised an explanation of how the various parts of that work. There was also an awful lot of discussion in the comments and on Discord about what could be done with the extra RAM that I had to put into the pallet circuit. So I'm going to explore both of those today, build a few extra demos and move the pallet circuit closer to something we can actually put onto a PCB in the build. Let's go. First thing to note is there isn't the corruption at the top of the screen that the last version I showed you had. Now I fixed that by optimizing the pallet update so it completes inside the vertical blanking interval. The original code was kind of rushed and it wasn't that difficult to speed it up. So let's stop this. So this demo has a few different parts to it and a few people were able to guess at some of the constituent parts. Now it's not difficult to guess that I'm using the pallet hardware to achieve this effect, but there's also a component of it which is just scrolling. So let's have a look at that alone. So this is kind of boring in its own right. It's very simple. I'm just using a slightly larger image that fills the frame buffer and I'm scrolling it around semi-randomly just to kind of improve the dynamic effect of the underlying palette animation. I can show you that alone as well. Now this looks pretty good on its own right, but you can see that the two between them actually kind of complement each other quite well. Okay, let's talk about how the animation works. Now lots of people jumped in and said, oh, it's a pallet cycling effect. And I'm gonna show one of those later on, but it's not a simple pallet cycling effect. What I actually do here is a two dimensional operation where I take the 256 colors of the palette and I arrange them as a 16 by 16 texture. Then I map that onto the model of the vortex, render it out as a static image, and then I can take any texture I want and scroll it in the both U and V direction arbitrarily just by updating the palette. This will give you an idea of where those U and V directions are with the red and the green ramps representing those. Now the big difference from a palette cycle effect is I can animate the U and V directions at independent rates and that makes the whole effect feel a lot more dynamic. So here we just have the U animation going on and that looks actually pretty boring. and down the V animation separately. And that actually looks kind of boring as well. But when we combine the two of them at different rates, the effect gets a lot more interesting. Now, if you don't quite believe me using the term texture on this surface, maybe this will be interesting to you. So this is exactly the same vortex texture, but I'm running the Minecraft cobblestone texture on it instead of the 16 by 16 texture with the green grid on it. You can just about make out the texture. And if you squint in just the right way, it actually looks pretty cool. But the whole effect of this texture is really noisy because of the underlying effect is quite noisy because of the way you end up sampling the three dimensional shape. So it was far better to use the very simple green grid texture that I actually showed because that just makes what's going on an awful lot clearer and easier to see. So I hope that gives you a nice solid idea of how this nice little effect works. Everything in it is actually quite simple, but when you put it all together, the effect is actually pretty cool. Now, when people said color cycling demo, I immediately started thinking about um, old plasma fractal demos. And a couple of people spoke about those in the comments as well. So I've quickly coded up one of those for this. So what I've got here is a simple plasma fractal that fills the 128 by 64 back buffer. I'm doing the scrolling effect again, but just in a, a much more simple way, just to make the whole effect slightly more dynamic. 
and I'm taking a single palette and just sliding it through the effects, you get this lovely little ripple effect through the texture. This one's really simple, but uh, I really actually enjoy the, the visual effect you get from this. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to talk about is using the unused palette memory. We put in eight kilobyte memory chips for each of red, green, and blue, and then we've only used 256 bytes of each of those. Now, the reason why that happened is simply because nobody makes the really small RAM chips anymore that would have been more appropriate for this. But since we put them in there, it'd be nice to explore a way to use it. Okay, so these three RAM chips are eight kilobytes a piece. We only have 256 bytes in use. So we've got eight address lines that we've cross-connected with these pink lines. And then we've got another five address lines that we've just tied directly to ground. What we need to do is work out some way of driving those five address lines under control of the CPU. Now, let's fit a 574 latch chip in here. Power and ground. Now we've got an output line here, which is an active low enable. So let's pull that down. And we need some inputs on that. Now exactly the same as the registers on the scrolling, we're just gonna take that from the memory data bus. Same as we did over here for the RAM inputs. Okay, so in the top right, we've got a low line and when we trigger that, whatever's on mem data will get read in and stored in the 574. And then we can use five of those outputs as the address lines. Now we've got registers on the tile map that we use for scrolling, and we derived those from some memory mapped IO in the interface board, but we didn't have a spare register for that. So we kind of need to invent another one. We did talk about the palette using three bytes out of every four. So this 138D multiplexer has three outputs that are triggered for each of those interlaced chunks of memory. So what I'm actually gonna do is use the fourth bit here, because that will go low any time one of those currently unused fourth bytes is accessed. So essentially, our register is mapped into 256 different locations. That's horribly wasteful. It would be very easy to add a couple of additional demultiplexer chips to narrow that all the way down to just a single one of the 256 entries. But for today, there's no reason for us to do that. In fact, there's no reason to do that unless we come up with a use for those additional memory locations. And right now I don't have one. Now I'd like to see what's in those latches. So I don't have room on here for it. So I'm just gonna add this little extra breadboard just containing some LEDs. We can use the monitor to write to addresses in memory and in theory, update that register. So 8C00 is the address of the palette. So that's actually going to be the red component of the first palette index. One will be green, two will be blue, and then three is the unused one that we've mapped in here. Well, that looks promising. So it should be just the top bit set. Okay, so that actually works. We've got a incredibly simple circuit we've added that gives us eight bits of extra register data that, and we're only gonna use five of those bits, the ones we've connected to these LEDs. Okay, so for once I'm gonna turn the power off for this. Right, so address bit 12 is pretty easy. It's this spare one we had to bring low. Okay, that's cross-connected. And we've wired it into bit four. So now we need to look at the next four bits. We've got three bits in a row for lines eight, nine, and 11. And we skip one, and then we've got A10 there. Now, once again, we don't actually care about the numbering. We can access them in whatever order we want because we're doing both the memory writes and the reads using the same address lines. Okay, so that's the lines cross-connected. We do need to connect them back to the latch chip still though. Should 
Should have made these lines slightly taller. Okay, in theory, that should work. Okay, I'm gonna move my cameras around and see if that uh, does what we hope. Let's get some power in. Now what this extra register gives us is 32 banks of palette, which we can switch between using the contents of the register. So I've written demo code and I'm gonna try it for the first time now. So I've adapted a version of the Parrot's image display code. Now, if you actually watch that, before the parrots displayed in exactly the same way they did in the previous video, it took a lot longer and there was some glitching around on the screen. That's because I've taken the palette and instead of just loading it once, I've loaded it 32 times. So I've actually got 23,808 multiplies in that code in order to upload into the palette memory 32 copies of that palette at different intensity levels. Intensity zero is full brightness of so the parrots have displayed as they did at the end of the last video. So let's try and do something that would have been quite a bit more difficult before we added this hardware. I'm gonna do an image fade. Okay, that appears to work. Now this probably seems like a really simple piece of functionality to anybody who's not had to code at a low level, but this is actually quite a difficult thing to do. The old hardware could have done that. All I had to do was build a big pre-calculation table of all the palettes, and then I could have uploaded them in the vertical blanking interval, and that would have given me a nice smooth fade in fade out like this. I could maybe have done it at runtime if I spent the frame doing all the multiplies, then uploaded the palette without taking any extra memory, but uh, that would have actually been very computationally expensive and I haven't added up the numbers to see if that was possible or not. But this register change is a very simple one cycle operation. We could do it during the horizontal blanking interval, which lets us do vastly more interesting things. So let's play with that instead. This demo, if it works, is just updating the register for each horizontal line and cycling through the starting value in each frame. That's cool. So we're basically doing the same fade here, but we're doing it on a line by line basis in a different offset. I really like the way there's this kind of an optical illusion on this where the if you kind of watch a section of the image, it seems to fade in and, and fade out, but uh, actually the average intensity of the image is pretty consistent. So now let's see if we can do anything much more interesting. And one of the demos that I've written in the past that people really liked was the beam racing cylinder demo that takes the parrots, wraps them around the cylinder and rolls it up and down the screen. And that effect is done by modifying the vertical scroll register on each scan line. But if we combine that with what we can do here, I think I can add some shading to that cylinder, which is really cool. And I'm quite keen to see this running on the hardware. And that doesn't work. Right, this is quite surprising. This is the first time I've written a piece of code on the simulator and it hasn't worked on the hardware when I've run it. So we can see the actual new palette update is working, but the scrolling component that creates the cylinder effect isn't. So I need to look into that. Okay, this is the original cylinder demo code. It doesn't support the palette, but it should do something but that's not working. Okay, so the hardware change we made to the tile map circuit on breadboard to allow us to change the vertical scroll register on a line by line basis appears to not work. And that's quite worrying. How did I break that? Okay, so this is the set reset latch we built in order to handle that option. 
So it's triggered when we update the third scroll register. That's the upper byte of the vertical scroll. And then we reset it on VJ line reset. the bottom bit here and that's latched in with all the other sync signals from data bit zero okay it feels like we didn't ever actually added that line reset properly because it was originally the horizontal sync signal Okay, I'm just going to kind of clone the HSync line into that line. Bingo. So this is still my original cylinder demo and I haven't updated it to support the palette hardware so it's just coming out in odd black and white but let's load the new version up with the shading and see how that looks. Ah brilliant works. This looks really cool. But that looks awesome. It's uh, one of those things where we've put together layer upon layer of actually quite simple effects and functionality. And then we can kind of bring something up on the screen that looks like it's doing a lot more than it actually is. So it's very rewarding. Okay, I'm really pleased with this. The shaded cylinder demo kind of brings it all together and it just plain looks cool, I think little bit of unexpected troubleshooting there but it makes builds like this kind of interesting when you actually hit problems and have to work through them and I'm particularly pleased that was just a little bit of data I hadn't set up correctly in the ROM used for generating the synchronization signals. A big thanks to all my patrons your support is always appreciated and I was actually especially pleased that putting together the data for this video I noticed I've crossed the first kind of milestone goal that I set when I created the Patreon and you know, I, I really don't know what to say. I, I really am humbled and I do appreciate the support. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching. I've um, done a bunch of work recently on some PCB design, so I'm waiting for that. So expect a couple of soldering videos coming up quite soon. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.